Cause what we had can't be replaced. Power line is always in my face. Especially when I have them on my bag. Yeah, I lost all of that. I'm going through something right now, okay? I'm back and today we're doing some burn Exactly. Hey guys, I'm back and today I don't know how to talk and there's hair in my mouth. Awesome. Okay. So today and in any subsequent day or outfit that follows, I will be creating my very own personalized handbag. But like not from scratch. I'm going to be using something because it is customized something that already exists day or time. Like I said, it's going to take a long time. But I don't know if you recall a while back, I painted my very own heels to match my bead dress and it was a whole thing and it was super cute. But I had said to you guys, that there was a really good way that you most likely could have done the same thing that I did and make it last. Although FYI, my shoes still look great, but to be fair, I've also only worn them twice, so maybe that's why. But either way, those were leather shoes and I said, maybe, just maybe, you'd have better luck getting some acrylic leather and going from there if you decided to make something. And so, because I would like to design and make my own custom little purse, oh no, my hair fell out. <laughs> I picked up some acrylic leather paints. Now these are not super fancy or special, they're literally just something that I picked up off of Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description in case you want to try them for yourself. But basically, I need to know if it's something that I could use as a medium before investing large chunks of money. Because as I have mentioned many a time before, and as anyone who personally knows me could attest, I begin many, many projects and start collecting for them as though it's going to be the rest of my life kind of endeavors. And then like they just join this room of chaos that is surrounding me. So before investing any heavy duty fundage into a leather painting future, I need to know if it's something that I enjoy and um, just try it. So I think this was like $27, maybe 29, maybe even 26. And it's going to include 20 different colors. Apparently they are unique colors, which means they're never going to be found again, obviously. But what are we going to be painting on? Well, that's the exciting part. This right here is a dinged up crappy need of repair Mishi handbag or Mishi, Mishi, whatever you want to call it. And if you've never heard of that before, that's okay because a lot of people haven't. So Essentially, how cool is this? It is a straight up handbag with magnets. And in order to personalize it and not have to have a million handbags, you could just buy outer shells, which could look literally like anything. And you could just change the look of your handbag for whatever the occasion might be by adding it because it's magnetic. And I've been seeing them in the thrift stores and I'm like, why don't I use one of those? So 12, 11 years ago, I had seen people buying cute backpacks and purses and stuff. And I was like, but I'm a nerd and I want Yoshi on something. And I remember like customizing a purse. I went online and then these flaps essentially popped up where you could design a flap, have it printed, and then you can attach it to a bag, AKA the Michi bag or Mishi as I used to call it because I didn't know better. And so I went through the whole process of designing a Yoshi and then a Luigi and a Mario. And then I never ordered them because of course they were really expensive. And it's like Pinterest, add it to your save pile. I'm going to do this and you never do. So it sat in my cart. But recently I I remembered these things existed because I've been seeing them at the thrift stores and I'm like, wait a minute, if nobody thinks these are popular anymore, maybe I could buy a bag, buy the flap, and then poof, brainstorm here, I could design my own. I'm not the greatest artist, but boy, was I willing to try. And so, that's the plan. So I was looking for all these shells because I wanted one that was nice and plain because they do have different textures like snake skin, alligator skin, all that. But I needed something flat, essentially like an easy flat canvas, if you will. And I had never found the bag, so it wasn't the right time. There wasn't a point in investing that. Until the 18th of September this year, I found this handbag here with the perfect blank, very plain shell on the outside for only, guys, ready? $3.99. You probably can't see that, but I was very happy. Every time I I had gone to the thrift store, the shells alone were being sold for $10. So I was like, oh my God, I can do this. Now there are gonna be a few other things that I'm gonna have to focus on eventually, like swapping out the handles. They are definitely super nasty, or as my friend would say, crust nasty, and they need some cleaning. In fact, the whole thing does need a once over, so I will definitely be working on that. But of course, the main focus is going to be on the uh, customization process. Let's switch down to the table and uh, get started with the cleaning and figuring out how to paint this purse process. Whoop. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this shell before doing anything else because our focus is on the outside today. And we need to take this project one step at a time. So before I do anything else, I am going to clean the outside so that we can actually prep it for paint. And to clean this, I'm gonna be using some straight up warm water and a piece of blue, if that matters to you, paper towel. I'm gonna squeeze it out so that it's damp and just very normally wipe down this purse because it does have a bit of gunk on it, but to be honest, it doesn't look like it's gonna need anything super abrasive to take care of it. And this seems to be working, which is wonderful because if I do not have to use any soap-based medium, then I am feeling much better about it since it would probably require extra steps to make sure there's no residue left in order to prep the actual leather, which I'm pretty sure is pleather, but I have acrylic leather paints, so we're going with it. But basically, if I don't have any residue, that's less steps for me to get to the painting part. And so things are looking pretty good here. So I'm just gonna go at this one more time with just plain old water once again, except I'll be a bit more firm just to make sure that I'm getting in any grooves or the stitching, trying to remove as much dirt as possible before leaving this off to the side to dry completely. And would you look at that, it only took five minutes. Wonderful! But before I can do anything, I'm gonna use some painter's tape to kind of protect the metal bits that are on this purse. Since I unfortunately do not have access to the fastener sections on the inside of the shell. So starting with the logo, I've just cut four pieces of my tape and shimmied it underneath so I can get some nice crisp corners because although these are metal and I can easily wipe them off later, I mean, why not try to be clean right from the get go, right? You're right, Jen. I know, thank you. From there, I'm gonna move on to the four little metal pegs underneath the shell because although this is the base of the purse, regardless, it's still gonna be painted down here. And of course, just like the logo, I can wipe these off later, but I'm worried that any paint that I do have here, plus any water for cleaning things up, will get some manky stuff coming out of the bottom of the pegs. I don't know where this purse shell has been. What if it starts seeping out some kind of bleh once it starts getting damp and it ruins my awesome art? <laughs> so yeah, I'm just wrapping around the outside, pinching the excess tape into little cones on top and snipping off the excess, giving me my almost prepped shell. Now the next step is going to be priming this piece so that my acrylic leather paints will adhere nicely and also be kind of vibrant, which means it's time to finally open up my paints and see if I have a primer in there, because if not, well, this is gonna be a bit embarrassing because I didn't buy any. You think I would have planned this out a bit better. What does it say? Art time acrylic leather paint can be used on numerous materials for countless applications, including painting leather, canvas, and and more. People use our paints for everything from traditional canvas paintings to customizing shoes, bags, clothes, and so on. Awesome. Art Me acrylic leather paints will not crack or peel when prepped and applied properly. Using a fine paintbrush or sponge, apply paint in multiple thin coats until full and even coverage has been achieved using the acrylic finisher. After the paints are dry, you will get the perfect work. Okay, so it sounds like we might have an acrylic finisher in here, but do we have a prepper or a primer of some sort? What do we have? Colors, obviously, duh. So so we've got white, yellow, orange, pink, red, rose red, which is very purpley, purple, light green, which is pretty dark, regular green, which looks kind of bluish, pale blue acrylic finisher, excellent, I'll put that off to the side, leather preparer and deglazer, does that count as primer? I don't know, we'll have to see. Neon orange, neon blue, black, dark gray, brown, tan. In what world is this tan? It's like the same color as my bag case currently is. Okay. Beige, which looks more tan. And finally, straight up blue. Make sure the leather surface is clean before you so you could clean items surface with soap or water. Perfect. That's what I did. Some leather products have a factory top finisher. It's suggested to use a leather preparer and deglazer to remove it first so that it makes the acrylic leather paint cover the surface easily. Okay. I guess that's it. I do not have a primer, but it does say to use the uh, deglazer. So I'll just put these away and we'll go from there. Let's get started. I'm super excited. So now, like the true professional I am, I know exactly what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I've shaken up my deglazer slash leather preparer. And I'm going to take a nice new dry piece of paper towel and add some of this glorious liquid to it so that 
that I can clean off this leathery pleather thing. Ooh, it's actually taking off some of the red. Now, if I am honest with you guys, it kind of has that cold effect through the paper towel that you get when you're like taking nail polish off with acetone or nail polish remover or rubbing alcohol on a wound. Like when you put those types of liquids into any sort of fabric or tissue, it like gets cold. And that's exactly what this feels like. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But either way, I have gotten every surface. So I'm gonna let that dry completely and be right back. Now that everything is dry, I am ashamed to admit to you that it would be the step where we apply primer so that everything sticks nicely when we start adding color. But unfortunately, do you think I'm prepared? No. So do not use this tutorial as anything more than entertainment where you watch me hopefully pull something off and next time I will be prepared. Instead, I'm gonna pretend the white is primer and use it in very thin coats All right, so two coats of white paint later, we have a dried shell. I probably should have put something underneath because I kind of got paint on the inside, but you know, live and learn. This is an experience. Okay, awesome. What matters is that the outside is dry. It still feels like leather. It doesn't feel crispy or anything. And hopefully this is gonna work out for us because it is time to start sketching on my design. Boom, it's going to be Powerline. If you don't know who Powerline is, then you must not be a fan of the Goofy movie, which is, of of course, the best Disney movie of all time, okay? So what you see here is an image that I found on Pinterest, which I've just changed slightly and added more shapes and stuff to. I'm not taking credit for this at all, other than the fact that I turned it into a coloring sheet, which is why it does not look as good as the original person's, but that's okay, because it's gonna be a sketch on a bag and uh, it's gonna look very different from this in the end. So as you can see, I am just trying my very best here. And the hardest part, honestly, is that even if I get it to look semi-good, this is, a double-sided bag. So now I'm gonna have to try to replicate this on the other side and hopefully have a decent outcome <laughs> because otherwise it's gonna look mighty strange. But no, for real, I am gonna start painting one color at a time, nice thin layers, of course, and allowing it to dry between coats and or color changes because this is gonna be the best way to find out what the actual opaqueness is gonna be. Like how dark is the purple? How bright is the yellow? Do I need to mix colors off to the side to get the desired outcome? that I'm hoping for. That's the kind of thing that us artists like to focus on. <laughs> but no, for real, I am gonna do sections one at a time and hope for the very best. Now, if you're staring at this image wondering who the heck is this character, then I think it's pretty obvious that uh, you haven't watched Goofy Movie, in which case I say you should do so immediately. But for those who are uninformed, Powerline is a mega star in a Goofy Movie or subsequently the world of goofy, like goof troop kind of characters. He has a very sciency neon 90s electricity vibe going to him and he is amazing. If you've never heard his songs, I guarantee you will pretty much be a fan once you've listened. In fact, I strongly urge you to take a listen whenever you get a chance. Look it up on YouTube, Powerline, Standout, or I, like eyeball, to I. Or you could just look up Tevin Campbell, Powerline. Hey guys, welcome to an official day two. Here's what we've got so far. Basically, I painted everything white and then I did the cool atomic background in purple before realizing that I probably should have done all my light things first because I mean it's gonna be really really hard to cover up that purple but hey live and learn. So today I'm just gonna carry on sketching things out and attempting to uh, cover up the purple wasting even more paint because I mean I got no choice. All right back to work. I am doing multiple layers of my yellow just trying to get it a bit more vibrant making sure to let it dry thoroughly between each layer in an attempt to cover up some of that purple. It's gonna be difficult, but at least now I know for next time. I'm not gonna be mad about it. This is a learning experience and it's important to make mistakes in order to find out what works. It's just such a shame that it had to be on Senor Powerline here, but we'll just take our time and hope for a decent-ish outcome. It's important for me to find time to be creative, whether that be painting, making something, building a dollhouse, 
pretending I can sew, although I did make a pretty bomb dress for Halloween. But anyways, it is important for me to find the time to do these things so that I can feel like I'm still getting time to myself and not just doing things for other people. And because I enjoy the creative process, even if it doesn't always end up perfect, it's more about that for me than it is having the absolute best end product. Can we hope that it's perfect? Heck yeah, but does it always work out that way? No, not even a little. So I'm just gonna carry on my merry little way, doing the best that I can and chatting to you guys like we're on some kind of TED talk about enjoying the process. When life gives you power line and yellow, you make lemonade colored suits, am I right? You know I am. <laughs> Okay, yes, anyways. In an attempt to uh, speed up this drying process, I also have a hairdryer here on low so that I can see what's gonna be going on between these layers. Hey guys, welcome back to another day of getting stuff done, Powerline edition. So today I am going to be working on the wording that is gonna be in my pink section. It is going to say stand out because of course this is the stand out tour of Powerline. I've been trying my best to cover up spots that may or may not show through the camera, but did not cover completely with white or yellow because like a fool, I did the darkest color purple first and then I tried to put light colors on top of it. What was I thinking? I know. But anyways, I've outlined everything in black. He looks super cartoony and wonderful. I'm very happy with how he turned out, but of course I do still have some areas that I'm gonna need to touch up. As for anything else that you may be able to see, I'm not too concerned about those because I still have to have a whole background going on. This was just supposed to be my prime by the way, in regards to primer, I'm definitely gonna pick some up in the future because this has been cracking its life away. Can you see that down there? And I wonder if primer would have made that better. I don't know. It could just be that these are cheap acrylic leather paints at almost $30. I'm sure there are very, very expensive ones that would do a much better job. Ow, I just hit my elbow. But regardless, now that everyone is seeing eye to eye, it's time to get back to work. Today I'm gonna be learning from my mistakes. Well, at least I will be after I finished training tracing out my standout lettering to put inside my pink banner. I have done a fairly decent job with putting all of my letters inside this banner and tried my best to make it a gradient between green and yellow. It's not the greatest thing I've ever created, but at the end of the day, all I want is a power line purse. This is pretty good. So from here, I'm just gonna let everything dry and then begin cutting out the other shapes that I'm gonna be putting on the bag out of painter's tape. Everything covered in green that I want to be white as like an under shade, I guess. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make some kind of decision as to what the background is going to look like. But before I can do that, I'm definitely going to cover up my power line paintings. That way it's only the stuff that I want to be the background that will be exposed. I definitely want the blues and purples to stand out. So I'm gonna need a lighter shade, but because I've already got pink here, I don't really know what to do. It's not gonna be like galactic. I'm thinking more 90s school photo backdrop, but like chances are it's not gonna turn out like that. So we're just gonna make some stuff up and hope for the best. Alrighty guys, it's time for the big reveal. I am no longer excited. I couldn't even get the pink and the blue and the purple to match. I don't know what's happening. Okay, I'm just sad. So to do this, I'm just gonna carefully remove the um, painter's tape. Oh God. Oh, oh no, it's all cracking. Oh, what have I done? Oh no, I literally just pulled it off. Oh, I'm so sad. What what am I gonna do? I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. My kids are playing, so if you hear noises, I'm sorry, but right now I'm so terrified. What have I done? Maybe I can't make custom bags. It's like when your eyes are bigger than your stomach and you get too much food and then it gets wasted. My imagination's bigger than my abilities. We need a better way to say that. Maybe I should have just made the background black. Okay, I'm gonna stop complaining now. We don't know that it's bad yet. I don't need to self-sabotage. I know what you're thinking. Basically, I started to panic because I saw that the um, pleather was peeling up and it made me, uh, made me very, very nervous. Slow and steady. Should I have been applying some kind of saver between layers? Probably not, right? I don't know. So this section under here is all white right now because I still had to paint it yellow. Uh. There we go, we freed power line here. Now it's time to free all the shapes up, which are hidden. And when I find them all, ah, oh God. Nope, 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 it's pulling up the pleather. That is no, no good. What am I gonna do? I guess I'll just use a little bit of fabric glue and hopefully tack it down. Like I don't, I don't really have many options here. Let's get through this. 
very, very carefully taking off the tape that I can find. All right, so it turns out this isn't completely horrible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to finish it the way I had envisioned it. Paint these giant triangles at the bottom yellow and then add the words tour 95 and then paint in all these little squiggles and shapes. I was gonna have them be brightly colored, but they kind of look really good standing off of the weirdness that's in the back. So I don't know, I might just call it a day after I've done the other part. Who knows? Not me, that's for sure. And now I'm just gonna apply the acrylic finisher and then carefully, carefully turn it around and apply it to the other side. And I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do one or two layers of this, so I'll let it dry and just do it again, I guess. Did this turn out the way I expected? No. Parts of it actually turned out better, believe it or not. Am I happy with the background? Not exactly, but with the overall product, yes, I am happy. Especially with Powerline as a whole. Like, he looks amazing. And I'm very, very, very excited with the way he turned out. Unfortunately, I did notice that the um, leather paints don't really prevent any cracking. So I don't see this lasting an extremely long time but the best part about these bags is that you're meant to swap them out for different looks which means I'm not going to have the same wear and tear as if I were using the bag every single day and so that gives me a bit of hope as to the lifetime of my power line bag here because obviously if I'm not using it every day it will of course end up lasting me longer. Now it's really hard to tell whether or not I've actually covered everything completely in this clear lacquer, I guess, which is why I'm definitely going to be doing two pass-throughs. And while this is drying, I will clean up the actual Michi handbag because what was the point of working so darn hard on this if I'm just going to attach it to essentially a nasty, unclean, thrifted handbag, you know? And I'm going to remove these handles. So we've just got a little clip here and boom, just like that, they're off. So yeah, I'm just going to go in and clean every little nook and cranny as quickly as possible because I'm filming. Which of course does include the inside as well as all these nasty little crevices. And I guess I should cut off that designer $3.99 tag from Value Village. <laughs> and now it's time to see what we can do for these handles because they are pretty gnarly and falling apart. So I'm just gonna save the clasps. And you know what, if it doesn't work out, then at least I have backup straps. So I guess I'll try my best to fix these handles, especially since as long as I can make it go on these little silver hooks here, it shouldn't be a problem to attach them to the actual bag. But of course we need coffee because it's 9.30 in the morning and uh, it's January now. Actually, let's be real, it's January the 15th. I started this project a while ago. Okay guys, okay, let's do it. And I'll show you what that is later. I said later, get out of the frame. And I'm not gonna be doing this in any sort of professional way whatsoever. My plan is to trim off all the gunk that is here because at the end of the day if this doesn't work out well then it's just a learning experience okay I lied <laughs> I can't cut any of the gunk off um, it's very very well adhered wait maybe I'm getting somewhere hold on let's see not much wants to come off so I am not aware in the slightest of what I'm doing and so it's a thing it's a thing that's happening but for that I'm going to be needing some pleather I went to the thrift store and I just happened to be looking through the materials and I found like this suede material and I was like oh man too bad that wouldn't have worked for my handles but I really didn't like the feel of it I wouldn't be able to hold it for a long time because it's very very dry on my hands but before giving up on it completely I gave it one final smush through and realized the back was this really nice, smooth, cool feeling pleather. And guess what? For $4.99, I was willing to find out if it was gonna work for me, especially because I'm just trying this out and since I don't exactly have a plan, I wouldn't wanna waste a bunch of money on an expensive fabric. And now that I have so much of it, I have multiple chances to potentially get this right. So I'm gonna start by cutting off the tag and then I'm gonna cut some very long, thick straps out of this, getting them both done at the same time so that I can work on one right after the other. 
And now that my straps are cut, I'm gonna take my pre-existing less than gorgeous handles that came with the bag and use my cut fabric to cover up their ugliness and make them a bit more presentable. I'll just fold in a little piece of edge on either side and use some binder clips to hold them in place where I want the fabric to sit. And then I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of clear Aileen's tacky glue to help keep things in the right spot till it's all completely snatched. Then I'll go ahead and stitch right across the top in black thread, making sure not to go past my stationed clips because I will of course need to add some loops later on. And I'll be doing this to both of the handles. Hello and welcome back. It's a new day. I'm wearing a new sweater. It's still winter and I started this project in October and we've got a new coffee with my new favorite additive, chia seeds. Yes, you heard that right. I add chia seeds to my coffee because it reminds me of boba. The chia just kind of sucks in the coffee and the creamer and it's a little pop of happiness. You can at me if you want, but I like it and there ain't nothing wrong with that. Anyways, so here's what you've missed since yesterday's stitching. My handles look ugly, but that's all right because this is a, oh, that's not gonna be fun to hold. I was about to say, this is a learning opportunity. Anyways, they actually look really good on this one side. I'm probably yelling at you guys with enthusiasm. I'm sorry, I'm watching Call Me Chris and she's hilarious and now my energy levels are way up high, higher than they should be. Anyways, so this is where we're at. After I stitched along the seam, I added the slightest bit of clear tacky glue because I thought it would make it shiny, almost like that little finish that we had there previously. And now I'm regretting it because it made it crispy and hard and that's not gonna be fun. So I'm actually probably gonna take a sponge and wipe that off and then let it dry, which really sucks because I just applied it to this one a day late. Um, and if only I had started this video sooner, I would have known. So now I'm just gonna do my best to take some of that off because that's gonna suck. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's where we're at. While I take some of this glue off, I'll just quickly tell you that it was really easy to sew through this material. It was really easy, but my fingers are very dried out because of the weather. And it was really hard because I've also been making a lot of hamster furniture because I'm cool like that. And I've been using some really great tin snips, which are meant for tin, obviously from my husband's work, but um, they were really good on popsicle sticks and stuff. And it rubbed my fingers raw, basically. So um, my fingers hurt really, really bad. And here you go. If I zoom in, it's not gonna look like much, but my fingers are so sore and filled with holes because the back end of the sewing needle kept pushing through. So it's actually literally filled with holes, even though it doesn't look like it. And I have really bad arthritis. I have for like my entire life because I'm a sweet old lady in a 35 year old body who's been crocheting and knitting and stuff since like air entered my lungs. I'm a crafter. This is, that's how you know you're a crafter. You've got pain. But anyways, my hands look cruddy and I'm okay with that. But the good thing about this tacky glue I found is that one, it's clear. And although when you rub it, it makes little white crappy things, you can just kind of zhuzh it off. It's a very technical term, I'm aware. So I'll just wipe it down because what else can I do at this point, you know? Anyway, so today we're going to be continuing on by removing my little clippy jibs here. And these are like binder clips. That's me. They look like little super sweet pastel metal briefcases, which is also adorable, but I'm going to call them clippy jibs. So today my plan is to gently pull this apart now that I don't need it to be held anymore. And then I am going to take my ends, which you saw me folding over earlier just to make sure I had enough space. It might be a little hard to see, but I'm going to fold it in, leave leaving an opening in the uh, pleather from earlier. Then I'll add some clipper jibs here. And once I've stitched across this, I'll be able to fold in the last little bit of the um, not so great handle that I've been making to kind of hide those edges. And it should look something like what we had before. And I'm probably gonna soak the stitching after and let it air dry, hoping to all the crafting gods that it does not ruin this fabric because I don't know what the washing instructions are, but hoping, hoping, hoping that it ends up softening up my stitches, which are currently able to um, saw back and forth on a small tree branch and be able to break it. Anyways, so that's all I'm doing. Hey guys, I'm back and I washed all of the glue off the handles and let them dry completely. Honestly, it's not very different from before I intervened. And now it's time to take our new straps and add them to the power line bag while debating, does this need a purse charge? 
you know what, let's just go ahead and do one just to see how it turns out. So I've just printed off some pictures that I like from Pinterest, one of which just happens to match my bag. So it could very well be the same artist. None of these are my creation. I'm not taking credit for anything. I'm just gonna take the picture that I want and cut it out. This piece here is gonna work perfectly for my bag because I kind of want almost like a luggage tag or even a backstage pass because I bought this one here at Hot Topic, but it doesn't really match the look of my bag. But I am gonna take off this super cute little rubber power line head so that I can attach it to mine. I was gonna make one with my Disney Dorables because I did get the Goofy movie set, but it's just one, really cute, and I don't wanna drill a little hole in his head, and two, the really cute googly eyes don't really work with my bag. So instead, I'm gonna be taking inspiration from this super cool VIP standout tour power line like concert badge and sort of making my own to hang off of the bag. But I'll put that off to the side for now and we can continue making our little whatever it is we're making. So I'm gonna cut this picture down to size, glue it onto a piece of holographic packaging that I've saved from something just to make it pop. Then I'll just go ahead and cut this off of here. We're just adding a little bit of flash and pizzazz. Go with the whimsical kind of curvy line. It's not straight on purpose, guys. Next, I'm gonna take another piece of recycled cardstock, this time from a Gamma Babe box, LOL, OMG. This is why we save things, guys. And this image is completely perfect. It's very out of this world and would make a great backside to this card, don't you think? Because I do. Unfortunately, we won't see it very, oh yes, we will. Oh, it's gonna be on the back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slather this in glue, making sure to get the center because I really love the color switching over to uh, black and white on the back there. And while I leave this off to the side to dry completely, I will make some earrings in very much the exact same way by using some printed off images, which I've also made sure to make a copy of horizontally flipped so that I have the characters looking at each other. This time it's gonna be Max Goof dressed as Powerline. Once again, I didn't create these images. They're just print offs from Pinterest. And I'm gonna glue these onto some black cardstock. And once I've cut this out, I'm actually gonna take that holographic cardstock again and double up on it. So I'll glue it to itself and then glue the pictures of Max right on top so that not only will I get the holographic outline, but the holographic backing as well. And I'm gonna be making two sets of these. That way I never have to choose whether or not I want to have pink earrings or blue earrings or mismatch them on opposite sides of my head. And then once these guys are dry, I'll cut them out and add some jewelry jump rings and earrings bits to complete them and then pop them in my head. Now back to our purse tag. I'm gonna separate just a little in between the two pieces of cardboard cause I've had an awesome idea. And I'm gonna take this little keychain piece and another strip of that fabric I used to wrap my handles. I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to fix down the sides so that we have a nice clean pleather strap. Wow, that was so much easier. And we'll cut off the excess and then I'll just glue it onto itself inside the lanyard jibber thing. Yeah! Then I'll just add some hot glue in between those two pieces of cardstock and stick the strap inside. And then all I've gotta do is cut everything out and tapenade it, just to make sure everything stays super watertight and protected, obviously. Because of course, we gotta keep it classy. Is it starting to look like a kid made this project? Because if so, I'm not offended. This is gonna make my inner 90s gen super happy. It's clearly what I'm going for. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Oh, and here it is. It's a little bit more holographic on one side than the other, but you know what, it adds to the charm. Speaking of charms, the only thing left to do is take off the little power line charm from my Hot Topic lanyard and add it to the tag I just made. What, that looks amazing. Then we'll take the purse and the completed handles, which turned out surprisingly good, if I'm being honest. I'll just add them to the bag. Ooh, I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it because my bag's almost done. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, here we go, here we go. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle, my bag tag. She is brilliant, a masterpiece. Oh, let me just clip that on there. Zip this up. Let's move the craft stuff out of the way so it becomes all that much more impressive and bam, she's done. Oh, come on, turn over power line. There we go. 
as I said, bam, she's done. I am so happy. <laughs> like who needs this bag in their lives? Put your hands up, all of you, because whether or not you know or love Powerline, you know this looks great. I am ready. I found my Powerline shirt. I do have a Powerline hat, but I'm not really a hat person and it's gonna cause so many shadows. So we're just gonna stick with the shirt and my brand new earrings, which are looking fabulous. Like I said, I have a second set here that I'm not quite done yet because I ran out of posts, but having made one one blue and one pink of each and making a horizontal flip or whatever allows me to have the option to wear two blues or two pinks or a blue and a pink or a pink and a blue. So yeah, or share with my daughter because I mean, that's something that a nice person would do as well. But either way, the earrings are on fleek, no. And of course, I have my completed Powerline bag. Guys, when I tell you I am so proud of myself and how much effort went into this, it's gonna be an understatement because I've actually been doing this project for quite some time. And I didn't think it was gonna take so long. To be honest, had I just sat down, it would've taken me three days. But since I started this back in like October, so much has been going on with my mom, my Nana, my health, my kids' health, school, everything. So I've just taken my sweet old time and it's not perfect by any means but I just love it so much and I can't tell if I love it because I worked so hard on it and I'm just proud of what went into it and me not quitting or if it's because it's just so darn good if you don't focus up close or am I proud because I've learned so much of what not to do so that I can make a better one in future I don't know is it blending it with the background though like I hope you guys can get the full effect of how fabulous this is of course it looks better against the white table as a backdrop since I've got a lot of purple and pinks going on here, but honestly, this is a beauty and I am so incredibly proud of it. But is that just cause it's power line? I don't know. You know, I think we need a second opinion. And so for that, I'm gonna call the only other person in the world who I can think of loving power line as much as me, but also somebody who is incredibly honest and will tell me if this looks like doo-doo. So let's travel five hours in the future while sitting still, as I call London, England, to ask my friend Steve what he thinks of my work. Wouldn't it be a shame if he didn't answer? Oh, the grays, the grays, the grays, the grays. I don't know if there's gonna be a feedback. Should I turn off my microphone? Pick up your phone. He's not answering, this is embarrassing. Steve, Steve, are you there? Oh my gosh. Where are you? <laughs> Okay, maybe I should message people before I call them in the future. It might make things a little less awkward. Let's try this again. Hello. Hello, where's your power line? You should have somehow known that I was gonna call you with power. Well, Disney, that works. Okay, so I'm a little sick. Just ignore my voice and ignore all my grays. I'm gonna see if I turn into a really cool looking witch, but I wanna show you something because I'm pretty excited. Wait, how are you, friend? How's England? Um, it's very friggin' cold. Is it 10.30? Yes, it's 10.30 and it's been snowing, so it's been cold and not very nice. <laughs> okay, well, it's 5.30 here and it's really cold, like minus 30 with the windshield. I'm gonna set you down for a second because I made something and I need to know from another person who will be honest with me if it's oh, good wow. or if I'm just like liking it because I made it. I have liked stuff that you've made before, so I, I, I think I, I have high hopes, so but that's your fault for making really good stuff before, right? <laughs> Well, this one took me a little while. Oh, wait, before we proceed, do I have your permission to add you to a video because I'm recording this call? Yes, you do, yes. Perfect, okay. I am very, very excited. Do you like my earrings? Hold on, I just made these on camera. I, I can't quite, I can't make that out. Wait, hold on, I didn't do these ones yet. It's Max. Oh, oh, I see it now. No, yes, I like those, yes. Okay, I don't really know how I'm gonna fit this in because I'm up here, but I keep looking down there, so we're gonna whoosh, something. Anyways, three, two, one. See, I I wish I was a girl so I could rock that. Yo, you could rock it if it was a backpack. Oh my God, maybe I should do a backpack. Should I do a backpack for Steve? Look, I just made this out of cardboard. Wait, it's the back of my Gamma Bay box. Oh, because it's like, is that like the, um, like the concert ticket? Yeah, I had this from Hot Topic and I yes, loved it. Yes, So I, I like took, that. I took the little charm off to add to my bag, but this was really manky. So it was bright red. I'll have to show you a before. I'll just put it up here. Well, it's definitely not manky now, is it? No, oh, and it's double-sided. 
I like the, you know, the purple colours and stuff. It reminds me of, um, like, Saved by the Bell, uh, yeah. Bel Air, that kind of, like, yeah. Very, very 90s. I'm pretty excited. So guys, you heard it here. It's not just yes. me. He kind of likes it. No, I don't. <laughs> I, lo I love it. It's just, if it's a backpack, I'd be... I'm gonna try, I'll try to make you a backpack. I will try. I'll find one that I can do. Do you want it to look like this or a different thing? Maybe I should make you a Power Rangers backpack. Ooh, Power Rangers power line backpack. A mashup? Whoa, that'd be cool. I don't know if I can pull that off because I'm no artist. You need to do a Powerline video. I do. I need. To, I want to get the um the Goofy Movie Dorable <gasps> things. I got them. They're on Amazon. Look how cute yeah, they are. Yeah, they're on Amazon here, and they're not. You know the um the guy with the cheese, Leaning Tower of Cheeser. You can't get. I don't think that's the first time you can get him as a toy, isn't it? Robert Zimmeruski. <laughs> yes. And the, um, is it Stacy, the kind of girl that hosts the party? Yeah. She's in there. Yeah, you get Max, Goofy, Pete, Roxanne, Stacy, Robert, or Bobby Zimaruski. You get Bigfoot, PJ, yes. and Powerline, of course. Yeah, because um, you can get big. Have you got the McDonald's toys from? I wish. No, if you ever find doubles. See, I didn't like the, um, I'm not a big fan of extremely goofy movie. And those are the toys that I remember was from the X Games. Like it's all right, but it's not the same. So I didn't collect them, but I didn't get a chance to collect anything that came before that. So maybe I should go on eBay. Well, maybe someone nice in the UK will have a little look for you because they're, I think they're quite easy to get on eBay over here. Really? So, um, Good to know. Yes, maybe. maybe someone nice will do that for you just because that they would... love the gems so much. <laughs> I need to go to England. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. Steve loved it. It was a raving review. He was literally jumping up and down, trying not to wet himself. That's excitement. Okay, right there. He said it with his own words. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, thanks so much for joining us on my Gen Talk, and uh, we'll see you later. Love from Canada. Woo! See you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, guys, that's it for me. This gorgeous handbag, my brand new earrings, and talking to Steve. I absolutely enjoyed the heck out of this customization process, and I definitely want to make more. The question is, do you want to see more? And if so, wait, I shouldn't be asking questions yet because this is not usually the time that I ask questions. Let's try this again. Um, if you know somebody who would enjoy today's video, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about today's video. What thing should I not do in the future? And back to what I was saying before, if you did enjoy the video and agree that I should try making other custom pictures for my bags, what should I make next? Because honestly, my head is just reeling. Should it be more Disney? Should it be Polly? Should it be Care Bears? Should it be Barbie? Oh, should it be Pokeroo? Because I think the answer is yes, it should be Pokeroo. Or Deadly the Dragon. Oh my gosh, I just... You let me know what you'd like to see down below or if you even want to see anymore because maybe you don't that's fair but uh yeah let me know what you'd like to see in future because in case i didn't make it clear the possibilities are endless yeah <laughs> Oh my gosh, there you have it folks, that's the end of me in Powerline, as you see. <laughs> so from all of us here in the studio, aka just me and all the voices in my head, which include Powerline singing, as well as Steve in England, because this is England apparently, have a great day, go watch a goofy movie. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, if you did and haven't yet then please remember to subscribe to my channel, it is free and if you change your mind you can always unsubscribe later but for now I truly hope that you will join me as always thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye this is fabulous